I see so many patients at the clinic who, as they get older, they start experiencing pain in their joints from arthritis, and it's so difficult because there aren't many great ways to help. But a new study has just come out that looks at repurposing an extremely common and dirt cheap medication to help treat arthritis. And the results are impressive, but there are a few caveats. So we'll look at this new study, what you need to know if you or someone you love is dealing with arthritis. And if you want weekly health research summaries and health strategies that I share with my patients, sign up using the link in the pinned comment. This new study specifically focused on knee osteoarthritis. So osteoarthritis is where the cartilage in our joints starts to break down. It's the most common form of arthritis. And knee osteoarthritis is a painful condition that affects 365 million people worldwide. And presently, we don't have great ways to treat it, aside from replacing the joint when it gets really bad. But this condition, it is connected with being overweight. But why is this? Well, part of the reason is obvious. If we're carrying more weight, that puts more wear and tear on our knee joints. But there's more to it than that. Obesity also promotes systemic inflammation, and it comes along with other problems in how our body regulates blood sugar. These factors together damage and break down our cartilage. So here's what the researchers behind this new study wondered. There's a common medication that we've used for decades that reduces inflammation, improves blood sugar control, and promotes weight loss. And it looks like it addresses all of the main drivers of arthritis in the knee. So could we use it to help treat osteoarthritis for those who are overweight? The medication is metformin, and they designed a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study to find out if it would help. The participants either got metformin or a placebo for six months. And before and after the study, they asked the participants to rate their pain on a visual scale that went from 0 to 100. At the end, they checked how the levels of pain had changed. In the metformin group, the pain measurement dropped by just over 31 points, whereas the placebo group, it dropped only by about 19 points. So note the placebo effect here. That's where the placebo group also had improvements in their pain, but the metformin group, and this pit is crucial, had greater improvements. They also used a different kind of test to look for improvements in pain, stiffness, and joint function. They saw positive results here as well for metformin compared to placebo. But while it's exciting, there are a few caveats. First, let's put the results into perspective. How significant was the pain reduction? So recall that the pain scale had 100 points, so the average score before the trial began was about 60. So that drop of over 30 cut the pain in half for the group taking metformin. But this isn't the full picture. We need to compare this to the group that was taking the placebo. Their pain scores also fell significantly. They went from about 60 to 40. So metformin did improve the pain from knee arthritis by just over 11 points more than the placebo group. The researchers, before the study started, they were looking for a difference of at least 15 between the two groups, and the results didn't quite hit that. But metformin did make a bigger difference than using anti-inflammatory medications like ibuprofen or Celebrex in a separate study, which is a significant point. The second caveat is that this improvement for arthritis pain is potentially driven by metformin's weight loss effect, so we'll come back to that later in the video. The study ends on a cautiously hopeful note. These results point to a meaningful benefit from metformin, but the sample size was small would want larger, longer-term trials to get a clearer picture. So if you or a loved one suffers from knee arthritis, should you start taking metformin even if you don't have diabetes? Well, like most things in medicine, the answer isn't black and white, and we need some new ones. So here's the approach that I take with my patients. First, I'll explain that a longer-term trial would be helpful. Researchers in this case noted no benefit at the three-month mark, but there was a benefit at six months. And given the mechanisms involved, this makes sense would expect metformin to have an impact that shows up more and more the longer that we run. So this experiment, it only gives us a relatively short snapshot. But earlier cohort-based studies give us reason to be optimistic about what a longer-term study would find. It followed up a group of obese patients with osteoarthritis in the knee, and in this case, they checked the volume of the knee cartilage using an MRI at the beginning of the study and after four years. The metformin users had a rate of cartilage loss about half of that in non-users. So we do have some intriguing evidence that metformin can help relieve arthritis in the knee for people who are overweight. But again, we need further evidence before we can be confident about the size of the benefit. And it also isn't clear what's driving the benefit. So as I mentioned earlier, metformin is known for its anti-inflammatory effects. So is that why it helps with arthritis? Well, as mentioned earlier, again, metformin has a weight loss effect as well. So we need to look at what happened to the participant's weight in the study. The average weight loss in the metformin group was 1.8 kilograms compared to a loss of 1.2 kilograms in the placebo group. So the metformin group lost 0.6 kilograms more, and that amount probably isn't clinically significant in this context. Studies have found that a loss of about 5% can provide relief in obese patients with knee arthritis, while 10% is needed for significant relief. 
So metformin may have a small contribution here, but it's probably other effects from metformin that are more important. And I'd explain to my patients that we just aren't sure about exactly how metformin is causing these benefits for knee arthritis. So does it make sense to help manage this condition if we don't know exactly how metformin is providing the additional benefit? Well, if the patient sitting in front of me has type 2 diabetes, I've probably already prescribed the metformin. And in that case, my patients with type 2 diabetes are already receiving benefits. But what if my patient isn't type 2 diabetic, but they're overweight and experiencing arthritis in their knees. Is metformin a good idea? Again, we need nuance and discuss the benefits versus risks. There are two other potential benefits that count in its favour, and then we'll come to two potential concerns. The first benefit is that metformin can help with weight loss, as already mentioned. And besides decreasing the strain on our joints, weight loss is important for our overall health. But the second potential benefit of metformin is controversial and I'm talking about for people without diabetes. So you'll see claims online that metformin might be able to slow the aging process and extend our lifespan. And the initial interest in metformin as a way to extend lifespan was driven by a number of effects that are relevant to the aging process. So as we've seen, metformin reduces inflammation and it helps us to control our insulin levels. It also combats oxidative stress. This is the damage caused by free radicals, which are highly reactive types of molecules. Think of them as cars that are out of control on the road crashing into buildings and other vehicles. They can damage our DNA and other important cell components. But does the evidence back up the use of metformin to extend lifespan? Well, the Interventions Testing Program ran a large study and it followed up adults over a 21-year period. Now, these adults were at high risk of developing type 2 diabetes, but didn't already have diabetes when the study started. And again, it ran for 21 years. Researchers concluded that taking metformin did not affect all-cause mortality or death rates from cancer or heart disease. So I'm not at all convinced that non-diabetics will have lifespan extension benefits from metformin, but there are some potential risks here. One of them relates to exercise. A 2019 study where both groups were exercising, the people who took metformin only improved their cardiovascular fitness by half as much compared to those who took the placebo. And that study was backed up by another 2022 study showing the same thing. Metformin use reduced the improvements in how well the body used oxygen during exercise by half. And these effects are a big deal. If we're taking a supplement or medication that blunts the effects of exercise, we're undercutting one of the most effective tools for ensuring healthier, longer life. This is why I include TMG and microvitamin to help me boost my exercise performance. But just because I take a supplement does in no way mean that you should as well. A second problem with metformin is about testosterone. A study found that metformin lowers testosterone levels in men. So let's return to the question, does it make sense for my patients to take metformin if they aren't diabetic but they're struggling with knee arthritis? Well, the argument in its favor goes like this. Metformin has established benefits when it comes to things like inflammation, weight loss, and now arthritis in the knees for overweight individuals. It's been in use for decades and it's got a good safety profile. The adverse events are usually temporary and can be often avoided by starting with a low dose and gradually increasing it. And it's dirt cheap. You can get a month's supply of the dose used in this arthritis study, which was 2,000 milligrams a day, for just $6.14 at costplusdrugs.com. But on the other hand, the data is preliminary when it comes to arthritis, and there are worries about exercise and testosterone. So for my patients with type 2 diabetes, the decision is relatively easy that would start metformin. But for non-diabetic individuals who are overweight and have painful knees, then the answer isn't quite as clear-cut. Whenever I prescribe a medication, I have to make sure that the benefits vastly outweigh the risks. And I present those benefits and risks to my patients, and if they decide that the potential benefits for their pain outweigh the potential risks with metformin, then yes, I prescribe metformin based on this new study. But while we're on the topic of metformin, there's a supplement that's been gaining popularity and people are calling it Nature's Azempic. It's got some interesting similarities to metformin in terms of its effects, so is it a better option? We'll make sure to check out this next video here to find out what the research says.